Do you remember the rule from the Secure Act 2.0 that came out earlier in the year that affects required minimum distributions and changes the penalties for not taking them? In this episode of Friends Talk Financial Planning, we're going to revive that topic and talk about things that you might need to do before the end of the year to avoid getting stung by IRS penalties. Hi, I'm John Shear, and I run a fee-only financial planning practice in Middleton, Wisconsin. And I'm Bridget sullivan Mermel, and I've got a fee-only financial planning practice in Chicago, Illinois. John, before we get started, let's remind everybody to subscribe. It helps us find more viewers with YouTube. Okay, so John, let's talk about the Secure Act 2.0 and required minimum distributions, otherwise known as RMDs. That's right. Get out, get out our acronyms, right? The IRS issues RMD rules, and we'll talk about some QCDs and other FYIs as we go through that, right? <laughs> TLAs. You know, so, so yeah. we, we, had, we had done a couple episodes when Secure 2.0 came out, big deal, right? Very wide ranging act and a lot of things didn't take place. And, and it's easy to kind of forget that it wasn't that long ago when some of those things are in place right now. And the one thing that I, that I wanted to talk about here today is those uh, the required minimum distributions. And I think most people are aware, but if you're not, when you have IRAs and you're over a certain age, you have to start taking a certain percentage of that of that money out of your IRA and pay taxes on it. And effectively what happens, right, is the IRS lets us defer taxes, put money into your 401k or 403b can take a tax deduction for it. It grows. You don't pay any taxes. And they say, hey, at some point, we have to take the money out and start getting our tax dollars. And what's the, the first year? It's something like 4 or 5%. There's a scale and a percentage, but you know, there's some number. And then it goes up over time. And uh, and so you have to take that money out. And the IRS has had a longstanding rule that said, listen, if you don't take that money, that the proper amount out, the required minimum distribution amount out each year, then there's a penalty and the penalty had been 50% of the amount that you had to take out, right? So just oh, as yeah. background, so we're not even to 2.0 yet for the Secure Act, but what does that mean, right? If I've got, if I need to take out $10,000 from my IRA this year because I'm over the age limit, uh, if I don't do that, the penalty is 50%, so $5,000 in penalty, Plus, I have to take out the ten thousand dollars. I take out the ten thousand dollars, pay five thousand in penalty, plus regular taxes on all that. I mean, a pretty severe penalty, right? So, They're among the highest IRS penalties that I, there are, right? I mean, you know, one time you want to like fifty. I mean, and that, that seems kind of crazy to me, right? like half the money. And, and, and of course, if you're, uh, you know, cheating the system or intentionally doing things, but people make mistakes and defend a mistake punished by a 50% penalty, like golly. And, and one of the things about that, we'll talk about this in a little bit, but oftentimes when people did make mistakes and didn't take it out, if you basically went to the IRS and said, geez, I'm really sorry, I didn't mean to do it. Here's why it happened. It won't happen again. Almost all the time, I don't know if I've ever heard of any time where they haven't forgiven that penalty going, yeah, you know, you just screwed up, right? You're not trying to cheat the system. Um, then the SECURE Act came out and it used to be at age 70, years ago, it was 70 and a half. You had to start taking money out. Then it was 72. Now SECURE Act says it's, it starts at age 73. It's going to go up for a couple of years. But now if you're 73, you have to take these RMDs, right? The you know There's a couple of exceptions, but basically the year when you turn 73, you have to take your RMD, right? So now we're in this spot. We have to take your RMD if you're turning 73 this year or you're older than that. And if you don't take it out by the end of the year, there's still a penalty, but now they've changed the penalty. And instead of 50%, now it's 25%. You know, John, right? I want to interrupt you. Okay. Because yeah. I actually dealt, uh, was talking to a client this year, uh, this week who is turning 73 next year. So she's turning 73 in 2024 and they still have that uh, extra time rule. So she has until, I think it's April, 2025, because yeah. it's the first year of her RMDs. So if you're in that, I, I don't, uh, I told her, I, I'm not going to recommend probably that we wait because then I think you're going to need to take two in that year. In your That's first, right. Right. Which you don't really want to do, but that part is still in play. And I wasn't sure of that until I looked it up this week. <laughs> 
Yeah, no, thank. And you can push off. That's one of those exceptions. The first year you can push it off until the, you know, basically before your tax return. But then the next year you don't have that exception. Next year it's going to be double dipping, which right. for some folks might make sense, right? Golly, maybe you sold an investment property and you don't want to pay extra taxes this year. So you push it off till effectively your age 74 year, right? It can fit in, but it's the minority of folks in my experience anyway. Yeah. And it's just, it's not generally the plan. Yeah. Yeah. But so great, great. Thanks for bringing that up, Bridget. So you have to take money out if you don't. Now they've reduced the, the penalty, which sounds awesome, right? Uh, and it is with a couple of caveats. So now one of the rules says, if you if you miss, right, you make a mistake, now the penalty is 25%. But if, if within two years you make it right, you correct it, then the penalty goes down to 10%. Right. And so it's, it's certainly at, at first blush, I think it is better. But think about what we're talking about. It's, hey, we made a mistake. Shoot, I didn't realize I was supposed to do this. I had to take out $10,000. I fixed it. You know, mea culpa. I go back to the IRS and say, we did this. Now the penalty is a default 10%, which on, in our example of $10,000 you know, required minimum distribution, that's still a $1,000 penalty on top of the taxes. I mean, that ain't cheap, right? Better than 50 but it sort of lays this default in here and it, and it makes it sort of seem like or feel like, well, maybe the mentality or the approach the IRS is going to be taking is, hey, let's not be quite so forgiving. Geez, when the penalty is 50%, that's really draconian. We don't want, you know, so we'll, we'll you know, always err on the side of the taxpayer. Now it sort of feels like maybe, and even at 25%, you go, hey, 20, it's half as much. Maybe they're going to start enforcing that. And especially with this two year, you know, hey, if it's within two years, it's only 10%. I wonder if, and I know a lot of the talk in our world is like, yeah, no, now a, a mistake, you know, maybe is going to actually cost you some money as opposed to, geez, you, you know, it's it's almost, you know, the get out of jail free card saying, hey, I, I screwed up. Maybe that doesn't carry it water anymore. We don't know that. It's not like that's a fact, but this new change it, it doesn't make it like less meaningful to make sure we always say, make sure you get your RMDs done before the end of the year. Now it almost like, even though the penalty is a little bit lower, I sort of feel like, you know, double make sure that you do this because I'm not sure that there's going to be any forgiveness going forward. I'm not sure what your thoughts are on that. I, I totally agree because it seems to me like the IR, like, why did they change this? You have to kind of wonder. Not out of the blue, right? There was some yeah. reason for it. Yep. And so who motivated this, this change? You know, who was trying for this change? You know, why why uh, go for this change? And on its face, it seems to be taxpayer friendly. But I wonder if the IRS wasn't uh, lobbying for this. Like we want to um, start actually getting something out of this. Yeah. And probably handling a lot of forms that, me a couple forms, that they would just routinely pretty much routinely for saying, okay, you're fine. Yeah, you know, right. leave the penalty. So maybe they wanted to reduce that paperwork, but actually maybe start getting some more penalties. And that is, that, that's an explanation that actually makes sense to me. It's all speculation, right? We don't know that. And it doesn't really change any, you know, much in what, like in the old days, you had to take out your RMDs. Don't cheat the system. Now you have to do it too, but it's sort of like, you know, uh, you know, for me anyway, like really don't forget, even though we never tried to do it in the other, other, other side of things, maybe this might be a good spot just talking about, you know, what are we talking about these RMD? Like, how do you figure it out? What goes on with that? The, the value of your minimum distribution is based on the end of last year. So as of 1231, that value is used to calculate your minimum distributions, right? Okay. And uh, most custodians, we both use Schwab, they tell, they'll, they'll tell you right on their website, your minimum distribution for this year is X number of dollars, right? So you can go on there and see that. Um, and if you use Schwab, that'll tell you, you've taken out this much, you had to take out this much, and so far you've taken out that much, right? So if you have a question after watching this, you go, geez, did I do this? Go back in and check. You'll be able, you should be able to see it right there, whether you've done it or not for the end of the year. And that seems like you would know, but uh, one of the strategies we use with a lot of clients is a qualified charitable distribution or QCD. So if you're over 70 and a half, I yep. think it's and a half. Yep, still, yep. Schwab will send you a checkbook and you can make your charitable contributions to a 5013C from this checkbook. And that's called a qualified charitable distribution. The great thing about it is it counts towards your RMD or your required minimum distribution. And, uh, but it's not without its uh, quite a few challenges too. So you don't necessarily know when those cash checks have been cashed. So right. 
that's why it's nice to see that number. Like, okay, what what's run through? How many um, charitable contributions have I made? Yep. Yep. No, and that's, and what we, and that, that's a great, a great uh, reminder. And sometimes like we, I know we'll get, it gets confusing. Got the RMD and the Qs. Are they the same thing? Like they're not the same thing, but right. here, here's an example. We just use this to explain to a client sort of how it worked. Again, I need to take out $10,000 from my, from my IRA this year. That's my required minimum distribution or RMD. I want to send $3,000 to United Way as a charitable donation. I write that check out of the IRA account. It goes right to the charity, no no tax you know, distribution to me. So I need to take out $10,000. i have taken $3,000 and given it to United Way. Now I need to take out $7,000 and pay taxes on that to satisfy. So the QCD and the withdrawal sort of add up to that RMD or required minimum distribution level. Um, and you said about getting the check, ca- checks cashed also. That's the other critical thing is when you do those charitable distributions from an IRA, it's not when you write the check, those checks have to be cashed by the end of the year to, in order for it to qualify, right? So that's the other thing is this is a 1231 deadline. Uh, it's not a tax time deadline like some other things are where, okay, you know, make your IRA contributions before you file your taxes or those sort of things. December 31st, so there is a deadline on this that people need to be aware of. Right. And um, you want to make sure if you, I advise clients to make contribution or uh, charitable contributions out of their, from QCDs before December 1st, because you would think that these charities would be on, on it with depositing the checks, but a lot of times they're not. So yes. giving them a month helps and then just double checking it is great. Yep. Well, I think that's a great place to wrap things up. There are some changes coming in this year with the new Secure 2.0 uh, with regard to minimum distributions from your IRAs. Make sure you take your minimum distributions here before the end of the year. And um, with that, I'm John Shear, and I run a fee-only financial planning practice in Middleton, Wisconsin. And I'm Bridget Sullivan Mermel. I've got a fee-only financial planning practice in Chicago, Illinois. We're both proud members of ACP or the Alliance of Comprehensive Planners, which is a group throughout the country uh, that is fee-only, fiduciary, tax-focused, comprehensive financial planning. So both John and I are both taking clients, but if you're interested in an advisor near you, you can check out acplanners.org. And don't forget, hit that subscribe button.